Hello, hello. Welcome to the Born Offside show. I'm joined by the OG crew, Olan Takas and Kat Haddad. I've just now moved on from calling you kicking off with Kat. And you've given it a full Arabic spin Chabad. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I still Very like nice. kicking off a cat. Bro. Yeah, I think I do too. She's still here. Mm. Right. She's still here. She's still kicking off here and there. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have heard. I have heard of <laughs> too, about you kicking off security guards and that. You A couple drinks in you, you can't handle cat. Her Cords, I'm about to kick off. <laughs> <laughs> Cords is going to make me kick really? off today. Oh, no. There's something I about his stories. energy today. I feel like he's just going to I'm on one. I'm on He's one. on one. I'm on one. Uh, Olan Tekkers. It's a new look, Olan Tekkers. I almost didn't recognize him. Yeah. The Nike tracksuit and the mini dreads. Mini Jeds, yeah, man, we're growing it out, man. We go, it's a long process, but um, you know, I'm one that invests in myself, so I love it. What is your thoughts on dreads? I love it, yeah. Do you um, like guys, in yeah, dreads? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a great look for you. Okay. Um, I'm vibing it, and I we were talking about it off air before. Yeah. How long's the process? It's like it can be six months to a year, depending on wow. what your hair's like. That's serious um, dedication. And then you have to go and get it retwisted. You're not supposed to wash your hair for a period of time because it's going to wash out the curls and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, you just you got to stick with it. Oh, and I just it. want something. I just want something different. I've had that hair, like that big afro hair, for mm. like probably like going on four to five years. Yeah. Wow. As long it's as I can, as long as I remember, so I was like, you know what? Try something different. What did you not? have before that? I had it like short waves. I had short waves. Okay. For a bit. Um, but I was just like, you know what? Let me try something different. Why not, man? Cords, what's the craziest hairstyle you've had? Mm. I've gone blonde a couple times. Have you? Yeah. I, I actually reckon you'd look good blonde. I've gone blonde. I considered uh, bringing a bit of colour back. Did you? But, yeah. uh, all right. I don't know. I'll Maybe wait. we should just all change it up we on the couch. We should just all change it up a little yeah. bit. Sure. Eh? Yeah. What Why would not? you like me to do to mine? You said you, say you used I've to be blonde. I've had so many I, hairstyles. I think you'd look good with like blonde streaks. Oh. Like a, a bit of a, like a belliage yeah, thing, yeah, like yeah, the blended yeah. vibe, look. Vibe, right. vibe, I've vibe. had that. Yeah, I'm, I, I'll take you through the portfolio of hairstyles <laughs> Yo, that I've had. Right, fantastic. I've had short bobs, blonde, not super blonde, bob? but very blonde. Okay. okay. Um, anyway. You've had yeah. bobs, huh? Good old Robert. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's That's move on to some shit joke. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna crack some shit ones today. Let's uh, <laughs> let's talk some football, shall we? That's what we meant to do here. A uh, bit of A League news: big for the Mariners, a huge win Massive. against mm. Adelaide United. It's the fourth time they met this season. Fourth time that Mariners beat Adelaide. Adelaide are a good side, but Great sometimes you've got Mariners that bogey side their, you can't beat. Yeah, they yeah. were their kryptonite. They were their kryptonite. Over twenty thousand people. It's the biggest crowd ever up there in Gosford. So so good to see. They're gonna take on uh, Melbourne City mm. in the final. How are we feeling about who's winning this? It feels <sighs> like there's a lot of momentum with the Mariners, yeah, but yeah. yeah. I, I just, I think, um, I feel like the Mariners going forward, like that front three, front four that they've got, Sam Silvera's on fire. Mm. I think they they could push it, you know. Like mm. I'm vibing mm. them a little bit and I'm mates with Sammy, so. Yeah. I'm also mates with some of the Melbourne voices. Yeah, so I know. Like, like, where's everyone? your loyalty? It's, it's, where's a, your it's, loyalty? A, it's a tough one. Mm. Um, I hope Glover, uh, Tommy Glover does well, but you know. That's it. You just want to. You just want an entertaining draw. Yeah, yeah. I want to love it to save a penalty. Yeah, yeah. That's it. You want something like that. Goals. And the the crowd is is crazy. What do you think about that crowd? It's fantastic. It just goes to show that like there has always been mm. this football on the Central Coast. We actually had a comment in here. Uh, the common football fan. Mariners are the best run club in the A League and have been since COVID. We had Andy Bernal on the couch talking True, about you did. how. They managed to do this with such little cash. They're yeah. also the youngest squad in the league, albeit they're not that young, but the A-League does tend to be a bit of an older league compared to some of the mm. biggest leagues in the world. Um, the Mariners do have a very young squad. They promote youth. Do you agree with that? Yeah. They're the I best mean, run club for, the, for, for how small the Central Coast is. They seem, look, you can only judge based on what you see. Mm. And from what I do see, the players seem to have a great, like there's a great culture. Mm. They all seem to get along very well. There's great chemistry on the pitch. Mm. Um are you having a bit of a laugh there, Cord? I'm, I'm just smiling. <laughs> what the fuck? Just... Cat's so easy to crack. Yeah. Honestly, oh, he's going to crack you're me bite, today, you're I biting, swear to God. I'm just smiling. Just... What, what? I Why can't know. I smile? There's something about tonight. you today. I was just wondering how you knew so much about the team culture. But I don't know okay. that much, do That's I? Good. You no, just sat down to with fair, Eddie, Bert, went, Eddie Bernal, went, not um, me. When I went down there for to shoot for the A-Leagues and they were the one squad that when I rolled in, it felt like everyone was just boys like yeah. but i did come on a training mm. day so i don't know um the gaffer rolled in on a bike like really? it was just mad i was like Fuck, yeah. this is a this is like a sick vibe so vibe, yeah. they definitely got that kind of family yeah. orientated about that about the them. family thing is true i've got a few friends who grew up just hardcore gosford fans like mm. as in like going to gosford mariners supporters mm. and they love that club so much like whether they're at the top of the table or the bottom like they always show up every week 
I'm just, I don't know why. I don't know why, man. I'm pissing myself. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I just uh, it's reference. such a good final because it feels like there's two very different styles of clubs. You've got the family club in the Mariners and you have this beast that is City Football Group and they meet in a final. What's crazy about this, it won't be in Melbourne, right? We've spoken a lot of times yep. about the final being in Sydney. Yep. It's not quite a home final for the Mariners, but do you think it will? It's, apparently, it's going to be a, it's going to be at Combank. Is that, that's confirmed that it's at Combank. It's yeah. not at Allianz or is that inside information? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what? Do you know what I cracked me up? Have you just do you know what cracked something? me up? This is probably a bit offside as well, but the Melbourne Melbourne's group have organised a trip. I did see something. <laughs> what, what was that about? They've organised a trip for the fans to go on a bus from Melbourne. A bus to Sydney for the final. How long does that take? It's like eight, eight hours. It's a nine-hour drive. It's a nine-hour drive. Wow. But what I found funny is that Melbourne are literally sponsored by Etihad. Like, you know, that's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's well, like that's such a great point. It's like they're sponsored by airline, but they couldn't get a flight for the fans. It's like, I was like, oh. That's probably oh, the lack it. of Etihad domestic flights in Australia. Yeah, but. yeah. But that that's that's what made me crack up. I was like, Jesus Christ. But yeah, they're, they're trying to help fans get to the games. I get right. it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, it'll be very interesting. I think it's going to feel like a Mariners home game. I think yeah. if they've got 20,000 in Gosford, well, it's a one hour drive, one yeah. and a half hours. Surely they're going to pack that out. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere. It's going to be tough for Melbourne City. Let's talk a bit about that semi final. City beat Sydney 4 0, but the game really just took a turn. Maxi Burgess, did you see the tackle? Yeah. Straight red. Bondi Birdcamp. Yeah. <laughs> going in for some tackles that he shouldn't be doing. Is there any excuse? But it's not a red, it's not, it's not a red though. Is oh, it? I think it is. You think it's a red? Chef, do you I think, think that's a red? It's a straight red, mate. What? Uh, I didn't think I, that was a red. Look, I understand the Brexit in you doesn't want that to be a red card. I think that's it. I think it's a yellow. Oh, it's an orange at, at best. <laughs> it's an orange at best. I don't think that. Kat, what do you think? You think that was a red for Maxi B? I think so. He's okay. He, Can you I tell think me he's, why it's not a red? I think he's caught him late and he's tried to he's tried to pull out, but it's too. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard Sometimes when, you're, it's when hard. you're in too deep. It's hard to pull it's out. It's difficult. So he, especially. So, <laughs> I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> yeah. So I reckon he's just gone in for it, full force, tried to pull out, couldn't pull out, and yeah. you can see it. He's he's done that little. Ah, shouldn't have done that. Tensing his toes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So for that, I think. Oh come on, give him a yellow. It's a, it's a, it's a very important game. Yeah. But with VAR, it's gonna be a tough episode. With VAR, if you land your studs on someone's calf, and that's the thing, mm. it was so high the tackle, and and, it's and too it, was, high. it was on Tilio, that's wasn't why. it? Tilio mm. sold it well, which, yeah, which he does. Um, but once that went to VAR, you just knew that they were. He gave him a yellow initially, Ola. Mm, he did, he did. You know, because the referee can feel the sense of the game. Yeah. Twenty minutes in, he didn't want to ruin it, but once it goes up there and they watch yeah. it time and time again, when yeah. you see those things in slow motion, they yeah. look worse. Always they never look better. Yeah, they look it's worse. True. Always looks better. Do you think Sydney were in with a chance if he was on the pitch? Well, I hope not. I just want them to fucking lose yeah. Sydney. So. <laughs> so you were happy with the result? Yeah, I was happy they lost Tell us anyway. Tell how you really feel. Yeah. Yeah, but it is what it is. What it is. I'm happy to see the, the final anyway, man. Let's just get... while we're talking about teams, yeah, I on. just do have to congratulate you on Paris' win on Friday. Thank you. It was a tough watch. Thank you. Watch. Against the South. You see it. It was a tough watch for us. And you guys lost, so you just don't even speak. Who, 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 who do you go for again? Yeah. Is he? No, we, Roosters, Roosters. He's Roosters. the ah. fakest Roosters fan yeah. ever. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. own a polo shirt. Yeah, I forgot your Roosters I own a polo shirt. Fan. But yeah, it was. Um, I'm very, very excited about that, that win. I was... I mean, we're still struggling a little bit, but yeah. it could be a turn of the tide, you know? Oh, you know, I don't think it's that We'll see this Friday. We've got Cowboys. Good luck. Yeah. Cowboys got fed. I saw that. They got fed. Uh, so there you go. There's my two cents for rugby league. <laughs> um, back to uh, a real game. Caleb Bora, prediction for the final. So before we move on from the A-League final, give me a prediction, Kat. Melbourne uh, City versus Mariners. Look, my head says Melbourne City. Right. I would like to see Mariners win, though. I love the, I love yeah. the underdog story, and I feel yeah. like they are like... Absolute underdogs in this situation. So right. I'm going to say Mariners. Okay. 2-0. Without... Okay. 2-1. I think this is going to be a very high scoring game. Really? Yep. yep. I can see that. I'm going to I'm gonna edge my bets. I'm going to go 4-3 <laughs> to Mariners. That's after extra time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Extra, I think it's going to be one of the games this season and everyone's going to go, fuck, we should have gone to that game. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Is anyone going to that game? I have my own game that night. Oh, yeah, I can't. Well, I can't. Pos- what is it? Sat- next Saturday. Going. Yeah. Next. You, do you want to come with me? Yeah, I've got a ticket. Let's, let's roll. All right. I'm just going to let you know, though. You dare. I'm just going to let you know something. Yeah. When you were drunk on Friday night, you offered that ticket to me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you said did. You, you know go. that. You did. And That's you just right. said you can't go. I just want to let you know you were second That's choice here, Alan. Well, I know, I know how it gets. You, I, your first choice, and then it'll flip me in and go. I know how Cat goes. It's all right. When I got power tickets, I was 
to give it to somewhere else as well. <laughs> I don't, wouldn't go to a power game. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, speaking on some local news, you wanted to shine the light on, on some of your boys that yeah, are big, making big waves. Yeah, big up um, the boys at Northbridge. They actually listen to the pod all the time. Hugo, um, he listens to the pod all the time. So yeah. big them up, man. They've been doing really well. I, I think they beat Mounties, one, uh, Mounties and they beat an, another team. Um, they Pretty much a Sunday league team. It's a, it's a competitive league. So it's association it's, football it's for association anyone that's football. not from New South Wales. But they're not an MPL team. They're, they're not, not an MPL. Pro. It's association football, but I think they train They train once a week. Some of these MPL teams train three times a week. Yeah. Game on a game on a Saturday. You know, no one's on any money over there. They're just right. playing for fun. Um, but it's, it's it's really good to see them doing and well. And they're what, one round away from the TV um, rounds of the I Australian Cup. I think so. I yeah. think so. That would be it's huge. round of 32. It, it starts yeah, being it televised. Yeah, starts going on TV. Yeah, really so that's huge. an incredible achievement. Let's hope they do get through there, especially all the listeners that are tuning into the pod. Congrats, boys. Um, let's talk about an Aussie overseas. Sam Kerr didn't get on the score sheet. No. But she assisted. She's got to be one of the best players in the air in the world. Yeah. Right. She's just incredible at winning headers and she did that yet again. Chelsea beat Arsenal. One game to go in the WSL. Man United can still maybe win it, but it's Chelsea's again, isn't it? It's, 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 like, no one, they never lose an important no, match. Chelsea like just. In the like, women's, Chelsea women's. Are in the yeah. women's. They're, they're, oh, it's not talking about the men. No, yeah. I was going to say the men's team could learn a lot from the women's. Like, mm. they really do just know how to win. And yeah. I think, like, that in itself is a skill. But Emma Hayes is an amazing uh, coach. Mm. Like, she's got a great relationship with the girls. You can see that they've got a great unit. Um, but I think when you look at the numbers as well, you know, they've. Scored the most goals in the league as well. Mm. Sam Kerr's been flying all season. Um, there's no reason why they can't win that game. Isn't she like the Sam Kerr's like the Didier Drogba of the um, of the women's Chelsea? Like she scores in all the finals, doesn't she? Yeah, she's a big game player. She's big game pops player, up in the man. big ones. That's huge. Yeah. yeah, it's massive. We need her to do the same thing for Australia. Yeah. Does she fire as much for? Do you reckon she plays as well for Australia as she does as for Chelsea? Does that make sense? <sighs> I mean, there's a diff there's a is there a significant difference in her performances that, for Chelsea and her performances for it's Australia? It's the club versus country conversation yeah. in the sense that she's surrounded by very different players, mm. you know, and and I think Chelsea's really built around her, but oh, yeah. the Matildas have kind of been built around her to some extent as well. Matildas don't play the football that Chelsea women play, but no, exactly. That's the other thing. That's that's where it probably limits her to be able to play the way that she plays. Does Haaland play the same for Norway and he does for Man City? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him in a Norway shirt. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen him play in a Norway shirt. Well, let's go there now. Let's go to some international news. Manchester City are the champions of the Premier League. Shock. They win it again. I saw a stat. Phil Foden has five Premier Leagues. He's only 22. Far out. It's frightening, right? Remember what I was doing at 22. What were you doing? Nothing. <laughs> 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 Absolutely fuck all. Getting rejected by a bunch of clubs. That's what I was doing. Um, what a lot of people are gonna kind of like don't give him the credit he deserves, mm. or say like he he was only featured in two or three of them. But it's it's an amazing achievement as it is yeah. anyway. And and I do think as an English player, he's one of the yeah. those that are at the the highest level performing in that Man City squad, which is hard enough to do as mm. it is. You know, mm. we've got to give him his flowers. Five out of their last six uh, Premier League titles have been won by them. Kat, are Man City buying the Premier League trophy? You mean in terms of... Because a lot of people like to look at them, point the finger and say, oh, you spend all the money and you buy trophies. Do you buy into that argument? You can... I mean, look at Chelsea. What about them? Look how much money they spend. Look and at the players work. they've bought. It right. didn't work for them. Sure, it, it helps when you've got the funds. It helps when you have access to any player that you could want. Mm. They did buy, you know, Haaland, who has been a, a very important, integral piece of that success this season. Yeah. But they've done it without Haaland before as well. Yeah. I think it's a matter of knowing what works for them and not... I, I also think we shouldn't discredit how good of a, a coach Pep is. Exactly. And I, I agree with you 100%. I think that uh, I hate the conversation of, oh, they spend money or mm. oh, it's a money... But, Mate, it's fucking professional football around yeah. the world. Like, yeah, you got to spend money to win. Like, I, I hate the money argument. If you win, you won. Congratulations. There's yeah. rules in place. Yeah. If you're managing to stay under those rules, financial fair play, and still win, credit to you. I saw this uh, bit of a study. That someone was really butthurt about this, mm -hmm. right? And went out there and did a complete study I on why that. Manchester City aren't actually buying. And why oh, really? what they did is what they, they, they averaged out the yearly squad cost by looking at wages and something called transfer amortization. Okay. I don't know if I said that correctly, but I'm about to go on a little education here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so this it. is why Chelsea are doing like eight, nine year contracts. Because mm -hmm. if you spend 50 million on a player, but it's a five year contract, that's taken into account as 10 million per year for the mm -hmm. next five years. So apparently if you look at what City's actually done with their length of their contracts and their loan deals and everything, they're actually a more financially viable club than Chelsea, than Manchester United, than Real Madrid, and almost double PSG. Wow. 
right? Jesus. So then, so then, and Liverpool actually... are just behind them, just behind them as far yeah. as financial. Well, we know go. Liverpool are pretty savvy. Maybe not in terms of having such a long contracts, but they try not to spend those yeah. outrageous. Yeah, but what amounts. I'm saying is Liverpool and City are pretty much identical when you yeah. average everything out. Yeah, that, fair enough. So it doesn't it doesn't feel like that? Though. It doesn't feel. Why like does that. it not feel like that? Well, obviously, it's great business. It's actually nuts. Do you think that's just because we've fallen into the spiral of using do, do you know finances? What it is? I think as it's, I think it's the nostalgia of the first. Like, we know Chelsea came around and had money, but I feel like the first team mm. was it Chelsea or was it Man City? Because I feel like the first team that it came was around first. that just went bang. Everyone's getting cash. I because I support Chelsea, I didn't think it was us. It was but I feel match. like it yeah. was City. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like City just came out of nowhere and went bang. Here's and they've always just been that. Do you know what the difference is? It's the that Saudi investment and and it coming from a new part of the world. True. I think that really got everyone talking. Yeah. Right? For Newcastle, no, no Newcastle for, for City. For City yeah, Emirati. Emirati. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Are the, anyway, investment from a new part of the world, yeah. right? And it got people talking because they were like, "What does that mean for the game?" And mm. yeah, and no, it kind definitely. of. Started a bit well, of a trend. Think, so, so, like, Roman came in with Russian money. Yeah. Um, I think the thing there was Chelsea were actually decent before Roman mm. and rubbish. They weren't winning titles. Got you. Yeah, but we were, like, were, on the decent. brink. Yeah. City were shy. Yes. At that point. Yeah. Like, we remember City getting hammered. I remember, like, you see those... those, those I remember Chelsea sell. putting eight Pew. past City. Yeah. I, I clearly remember that. That was only about two years before they got bought. Yeah, wow. Um, so, they were, they were quite a poor side. And what was interesting about this graph showing all the financial fair play of teams was that teams that had actually spent more than AC Milan... Right, and AC Milan, mind you, just got knocked out in a Champions League mm. semi-final. Mm -hmm. Leicester and Everton oh, spent God. more than AC Milan. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't shock me. And they are sitting in the relegation zone as we stand right well, if now. You're, if you're the owner of that club, you're fucking kicking yourself, aren't you? You must be. Yeah, <laughs> you must be. Um, Jai Bull has asked, "Is the Premier League a farmers league now?" <laughs> oh come on! You we kind of, you people like on this Bay Munich, our Bay Munich. Um, Clip from last week, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they I was did talking like that about one. that. Yeah, saying you know, like the 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 Bundesliga is actually a little bit slept on, but I don't. I mean, Farmers League for Premier League, like you can't say that, can you? I don't think you can ever. What say if that. City went and won the next five? It'd be a bit boring, wouldn't it? It would be a bit boring. At It'd that be point, very, be <laughs> would, very you concede, boring. would you concede the Premier League's not the best league in the world if City went and won the next five? I think I think if they win the next two, it gets to a point where it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Here? Yeah. Like, is no one going to challenge them? Do you everyone know what I mean? Just come together. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like create everyone an Avengers team. squad where we yeah. just, everyone just creates a pack and goes, you know what? We're all going to do this so they don't win one more. Come That's on, boys. the best from every other team. Yeah. Take like, City. It, surely, surely not. I mean, they say Pep got so bored that he created Arteta so that he could challenge himself. Do you yeah, know what possibly. I mean? so. possibly. That's hilarious. What are your thoughts on the treble for City? Well, let's go there now because, I mean, City for a lot of people are uh, at the moment the best Premier League team we've ever seen. Before I move on, is that the fact? <laughs> the best Premier League team we've ever seen. Um, are they better than Man United's 99? Are they better than Chelsea's about, 05? I don't know about if they're better than Chelsea's or United's. When they, If they do the treble, like United did, then I might go... Mm. That's what best. I think, yeah. So it depends on the treble. I think so. Now, what's so incredible about this, right? They play Manchester United. So City play United mm -hmm. in the FA Cup final and they play Inter in the Champions League final. Both those sides were the last sides to win the treble in their countries. So United won the treble in 99, mm. Inter won the treble in 2010. So Good both start. Them, yeah, both of them would really want to stop this treble happening if not for their own reason of winning that trophy, right. which I'm yeah. sure they want to win. So there's a lot on the line, but particularly for Manchester United fans, this mm. is a great opportunity to beat City and stop them. And then again, forever you can say, oh, but you didn't win a treble, did you? Yeah. So this is, it feels like they such an important game for Manchester them. United. Are they any chance? Of course they're... they're They've got a chance. Yeah. But I think it goes back to your point of City just being so good right now. Mm. The way that they played against Real Madrid mm. in the Champions League shocked me in the it sense did. that, you know, we've spoken for it, a good month forget. about we how good forget. Real are. Yeah, yeah. And in that moment, City just said no. Boss them. They bossed Finally them. Well, also, they, I don't know why Ancelotti benched Rudiger, who had Haaland in his pocket the first Weird. round. I don't know what happened there. Mm. They, they let him go. But <laughs> I spoke, I was speaking to a lot of Madrid fans about that game and everyone was like, well, we're. Madrid just off and it was like nah. nah. Madrid went off like City, City were that on. good. Like Carl Walker they put Vinicius him. Jr. in his pocket and said you're not coming out. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah, they killed him. Yeah. They absolutely killed him. I'm going to read to you a lineup here, right? Ortega, Walker, Akanji, Laporte, Phillips, Gomez, Mares, Lewis, Foden, Palmer, Alvarez. Yeah, that's a team that beat Chelsea. Isn't that it? team just beat Chelsea. I was so pissed off. That's a B that's a B grade yeah. squad. That's a team that's probably been drinking all night because they just won the Premier League. They're partying. And that's the B team. And they beat Chelsea, Olan. Yeah, no. Uh, I was, I'm 
I've got no words. Honestly. Can you believe that? We're disgusting. All I, all I can say is that we've got the same amount of trophies as Arsenal this season. <laughs> True. Just take a jab that's, at Arsenal Yeah, that's going to be my saving grace. We've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Man, so Robbie always says. Man, Man City on the bench in that game had Stones, Haaland, Rodri, De Bruyne, Edison, Diaz, Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, oh and Jack Grealish on the gosh. bench. That's disgusting. That is um, a mess. It's not bad, is it? It is not bad. Uh, one thing I did want to say, though, about this. You mentioned Arsenal. I hate to kick them while they're down. Right? But I don't But here actually. we go. I don't. <laughs> right? I actually quite enjoy kicking them when they're down. <laughs> Manchester United won a Carabao Cup this year. And they're in an FA Cup final. Have they had a more successful season than Arsenal? I think if they finish fourth, what they said. And they make, let's they, say let's, if they make Champions League, they, they, they only need a point. To if finish. they finish fourth, that's a better season. I'm it's sorry. a better season than Arsenal, right? Because yeah, what's the difference? I mean, between, they've got something to show for it. What's the difference between second and fourth? There's no difference. You're making Champions League. Exactly. There you no, go. you're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's they, it's. They owe Gary sorry, Arsenal fans. They owe Gary Neville. I don't want to bring. Up, I don't want to. The, th the thing Arsenal is, fans right, about way, Arsenal is like, you know when City, not City, Liverpool had that season where they finished second and it was so close and the next season yeah, they went they and won, won it, right? Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen with Arsenal. I don't think next season, I don't think they've built something, I know they've got a really good system, but I don't think they've built something this season to where next season they go, we can win the league. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Which is going to be the difficult one because next season we have no idea where they could finish. It's so true. Right. It's like when Stav was here, he was saying how... Arsenal's results is a lot to do with City just not they doing as well at the start of the season. Right, yeah. Like Arsenal were just doing their thing. Right. But it was because City had like lost and drew a couple of times, Arsenal was able to kind of take that top position and then hold it as mm. long as they did. Mm. So even as a hardcore Arsenal fan, he could still see that like their results were a result of poor performance elsewhere. Yeah, mm. well, when push came to shove, City went eight wins from eight games in That's the last nuts. league, whereas Arsenal have won two in that time from yeah. eight games. So it just, you know, the heat got too much in the kitchen. Who's got a better chance of beating City? Would you say Manchester United or Inter Milan? Um, I wouldn't mind um, Lukaku doing us a favour since he technically <laughs> is our player. Yeah. How yeah. insane is it that he's in the Champions League final and it's we let and we fucking loaned him out because we didn't think it was good enough for us? Yeah, yeah. But he's made a Champions League final. I know. I'd love to see him just um, do his thing. And, I, and listen, I don't hate the idea of Lukaku back at Chelsea next season. Well, especially if he goes on and scores the winner in the Champions League. Oh, all of a sudden, he's People will value. welcome him with yeah. open arms. Yeah. It's right back. Who's got a better chance of beating City? I think there's something special about the whole Manchester derby and, and what can be done in those conditions. Mm. So I'm going to say that United could put, put one on, on mm. City. Yeah. I mean... I'm pretty like I don't like Man United, mm. but I don't really want to see City win the treble. So no. I don't know who I'm going to go for in that final. But I know that I'm going to be black and blue into Milan in mm. that Champions League <laughs> final. Of course, um, their jerseys look clean at the moment because they've been playing in the Champions League with no sponsor. Mm. But a sponsor offered them a packet of money to for sponsor the them in the, just one match. Wow! How much they offer? Right, so eighty million pounds. What's the sponsor? One game, just one. Game. My club, my dot club. Have you heard of this website? Lies. You see that smirk? My dot I haven't club. Heard see that of smirk? It. What is that? What is it? What is it to do with? I don't do you know? know? What is it? So apparently it's an adult subscription website. Oh, Lord have mercy. Right. <laughs> it's like an OnlyFans. I love how you chucked apparently in there. <laughs> well, I had to do my research for the yeah, podcast. Okay. Okay? Apparently. Okay. I'm not gonna come into this. I'm a professional. Yeah. I'm not gonna come into I hear this. That. You, got, you gotta do your job. Yeah, I hear so that. So I had to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Just for and research. watch videos for, for research last two purposes weeks. only. Exactly right. Just for research purposes, eighty million pounds for one game of football. I don't care if it's porn, if it's what you take that. Surely the Italians will take that. Uh, I mean, no one really cares about morals anymore, did they? Do they? Um, but that's a lot of money for it's one like, game. It's like having only fans on your jersey when you win the it Champions is. League. Or when you're that's the Champions insane. League. Does but my club have the same reputation? Well, I hadn't OnlyFans? heard of it that before this. And yeah. to be fair, like the... Isn't there like something ethical with sponsors where it has to be like, you know... Well, so you can have a betting company and you can't have... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like what destroys more lives? Betting or women? Don't answer that question. <laughs> Don't answer that question. I Trying just, to put I, me in it there. I, I Fuck, thought, you know. I thought... I thought uh, right before that came out of my mouth, I thought... Uh, no comment. <laughs> No, no comment. comment. That's how I stay. No comment. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see if Inter cash in on it. And at least if they lose the Champions League final, they end up 80 million richer. Yeah. I would. You know? Yeah. Um, kind of like when that... Remember that, that, that porn star ran on the field in the Champions League final? Was it Champions or was League? Or was World it Cup World Cup. The blondie. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Oh, I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember how that N Napolitan woman said that she would... Um... That was if Napoli won the Champions League. Oh. Yeah, spewing. I know. 
was, yeah, I was you, excited. You recalled that quite yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, I was excited for that one. Now, I remember because she ran on the it was World Cup and like her Insta, her Instagram went from like 20,000 to like 100, like it was like a million. Yeah. Really, really quickly. But yeah. I don't know. I can't Did you follow? Out. No. <laughs> One of those burner accounts. <laughs> yeah. hey, one of those burner yeah, accounts. He used his Finster. Check it, I'll check it out. Um, there's, a, there's a little stat that producer Shab's brought up. Oh, no. He seems to think that Inter are destined to win oh. Why is this? the Champions League because of Croatia. That is the first connection I would have made. Yeah. Wait, wait, why? So why apparently, because of Croatia? A Croatian player mm. has appeared in every Champions League final winning side since 2013, right? Where Mandzukic, Modric, Rakitic, Modric, 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 Lovren, Perisic, Kovacic, Modric. Oh, wow. Now, City don't have a Croatian player, but okay. Inter have Brozovic. Oh, wow. That's a really cool And angle. also, there's also a juju against Man City in, uh, in the Champions yeah. League. There yeah. is a little bit, but apparently got lifted on Pep. Didn't it get lifted? No, 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 so? no. City posted like a tribute to Triore, to, um, to Yaya, Yaya. Yeah. trying to, you know, and you know what they were trying to do? They're trying yeah. to be like, you know, we still love you, Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Don't, Take don't away do the anything. Curse. Don't do <laughs> Take anything. Take away the curse. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. That's a thing. Do you believe in curses, Kat? Yes. Yeah? I'm, a, I'm big into the whole like superstition, curses, energy. Yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. Poor. Same. I'd never break up with you, Jesus. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm, I'm, You'd never I'm, have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. So th apparently there's a curse on Pep Guardiola and City. And we know these things happen because Benfica had a curse on them. They're still going as well from their former coach, Bella Goodman. What was, mm. that? What was the Benfica one? They, they sacked him in yeah. like 1960 after he won the Champions League for them. And he said, you're never going to win a European trophy again. Wow. And they've been in about, I think, nine finals since and they've never won. That's Jeez. wild. And they've even, they've built this guy a statue at the stadium to the try. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. offer something to the gods. <laughs> and he's just going, no, I rain yeah. down on you with havoc. The footballing gods have favoured me. Yeah, exactly. Have you guys ever felt that? Like when somebody has... Said something? Said something and then you feel like it's just jinxed your success in a certain area? Yeah. Someone told me I wasn't good enough for football. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean for that to get so sad. <laughs> and here we are, do you know what I mean? Sitting on a coach sofa talking about football, man. There you go. There's li life works in mysterious ways sometimes. Hey? Here we are. That's all right. But you're a social media sensation, so that's all that matters. I'll take it. It worked out. Somehow. Exactly. Um, you're famous and you can eat whatever you want. If you're a footballer, you wouldn't be able to Technically do not. People call me fat now. So I'm back <laughs> oh, in, I'm people back don't in stop. the gym. Uh, Mac you're is looking good. Leave Mac him is out. Don't be dirty, man. Yeah. Leave him alone. <laughs> Oh, like, do you know what? We've been on too much of the Maccas. Do you know what bothers me about that? <laughs> Everyone eats McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. Athletes eat McDonald's. Like Everyone. every, it's it's about moderation. Everybody. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what athletes eat? Because <laughs> I am one. <laughs> anyway, calorie deficit. That's all it is. You know. I love I love having a go, Cat. Let's go to one of the greatest managers of all time, Jose doing Jose things <laughs> because Roma are in the Europa League final after respect, their win. Respect, respect, man. Did you guys see the interview with that guy who does his impersonations? Yeah, with Mourinho. Yeah, yeah. It and was even Mourinho's so impressed. good. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, Leverkusen had seventy-two percent possession against Roma. I saw this. Um, and they had a, a shitload of shots. How many? It was a six on shots on target. Twenty-three shots to one. And the game finished nil-nil. Now, everyone made a lot. Oh, Mourinho plays anti-football. Go watch those highlights. Out of how many shots? 23. I reckon 22 of them were from outside the 18-yard box. Mm, That's okay. Mourinho's game plan. Mm -hmm. Set up shop. Leverkusen was shooting from everywhere. You can you can shoot from that far out. Exactly. But big up um, Tammy Abraham as well. He, yeah. I yeah. think if he wins this one, he's like completed football. I'm pretty sure. Because one Premier League. He was in the Champions League when he scored. One Champions League. Yeah. Um, That's Conference League. Conference League. Right. And now this one. So Good to see Tammy doing good things. Shout out to Tammy. Please come back. <laughs> <laughs> good to see him doing good things. There was real emotion. Yeah, in that no, one. I, no, I'm actually a big Tammy fan. If you could him. take Tammy or Romelu? I, I feel like Tammy can do more in oh. terms of link up play and just, you know, and he's a little bit he's a little bit younger. I was going to say he's younger. And yeah. I just, like, he's um academy product as well. So I've kind of watched his whole career. So yeah. I'm a huge um Tom Abraham support. Yeah. Well, he both, seems happy there as well. They are happy in Italy. Yeah. They both seem very happy in Italy. That's going to be a tough final. They take on the Kings of the Europa League, Sevilla. Um, and then in the Conference League, which we were all sceptical about the Conference League mm. when it started, but now I'm loving it because mm. this is a great final. This is two clubs with a great history that don't win shit, mm. but awesome fans. Mm. Fiorentina take on West Ham. Yeah. Now, you know these West Ham fans, Olin. They're going mm. to Prague. Oh, yeah. They're bringing the voices. Did you see the, that famous West Ham fan, the, the little like seven-year-old that did the interview? Did yeah, you see it? he was really good. Good too. So it was just funny, such a football so kid. Funny. Yeah. They're literally just, they're, they're grown up like that. And it's so good to see. They'll be blowing bubbles uh, in Prague, no doubt. West Ham versus Fiorentina. It's going to be a very nice game. <coughs> Jeez. Sorry, sorry, you got to get that checked. Sorry. 
Are you alright? I'm living. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry, cut that one out. Yeah, get that checked out. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to leave it in now. Cause we... <laughs> let's let's go to Olan's favourite part of football. The lower tiers of English football. Because mm. they've been box office. It's playoff time now. Mm-hmm. Sheffield Wednesday. Did Definitely. you see that comeback? Yeah, against my... Well, where we play in my boys. But yeah, it was a big big comeback. That was absolutely incredible. So they, they got hammered 4-0 by Peter Brew in the first league. Yeah. They came back at home. Ended up winning 5-1. Going to penalties and winning on penalties. Did you see the Sheffield Wednesday fan that was ripping up his ticket to the next game? Yeah. Oh. And then they, ma- then they made a comeback. Yeah. And did he every- not go to the game? Because he-, he ripped up his well, ticket. Well, I'm thinking go. like, surely there's an online thing where you can get it back, but maybe not. Like, the yeah. way they do but it in those games. In grounds. principle, like, going viral for ripping up your ticket before you're, you've even played the second leg Is, did not look good. Yeah. Fans, Shit. like, fans were not happy with him. Yeah, and right. all of this, um, I mean, Luton are killing it as well. I love all these videos about people understanding the stadium. Yeah. Because you've explained it to us before. Yeah. How Luton's um, pitch is like in the middle of suburbia. It right? literally is. Inside. It's like, and well, you the, have the to like go through someone's house. Berry Park. Yeah. Um, and it's literally like it's built in like houses. Like two two minutes from the town centre. Mm. But it's like really that's the centre of Luton. And it's, it's an amazing place to go so all the time. Cool. When I was younger, I think there's a stat that there's one one player who's going to break a stat. His name's Pelly. They call him Pelly Pogba, but um, <laughs> he he's going to be the only player that's played. If if we get promoted, he's going to be the only player that's played in the non-league, played in conference, and played in the Premier League as he's well. Gone all the way up. Gone all the way up with one club. Wow. Yeah, like kind of like a Jamie Vardy, but with one club. Yeah, right. Which is right. nuts. That's mad. Yeah. That'd be insane. Yeah, I was doing some research on Luton. Mm. Um, who do you think the most famous person from Luton is? Other than Olan Other than Olan Other than me? Yeah. Uh, as in player? No. In general? In general. Can you give us a clue? I he w- he wasn't this. born in Luton, but he moved to Luton and made his name there. And he's not a player? He's not a player. He's not a very, a very likable person. It's not very like. No. Oh, really? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. <laughs> Did you know that Tate brothers are from Luton? <laughs> what? We went to a school like five minutes from me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you How just... have you never brought that up? Yeah. I mean, I've said it before. <laughs> That's weird. Because when hey. you were talking about Andrew Tate on TikTok, you were. You I'm know, not gonna. I'm not gonna say that. Yo, bothered. like we're from the same. But yeah, you, you don't want to be associated. Not that I don't want to be associated. I don't want. I don't want to be. Not that I don't want to be associated with him. But like, I just think it's funny. He used to go to kickboxing. Like not. Not too far from. Am I mistaken though that his accent is not? Well, he's, he's American. He's got a cross. He's got a cross accent because okay. he grew up in England, but then moved to America. So it's like a bit of Good both. It's weird. You know, his dad was an African American world champion chess player. Wow, that's you know that, random right? as fuck. No. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you know that stat? <laughs> it's ridiculous, eh? That's, well, it makes sense now. Yeah, it makes sense. He's, yeah. Always, he's, he's him, always two I steps ahead. I saw him beat Piers Morgan in a game of chess, and I was like. Well, he played chess. He doesn't strike me like the type that yeah. can play chess. He chess, is, like, chess is very like a calculated one, isn't it? Chess yeah. is like if you're good at chess. Mm. Is it? Is it a turn on? Oh, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> she just got very excited. Yeah. I, I meant more like, wow, intelligent. If yeah. I met a girl and she was really good at chess, I would find it attractive. Really? I yeah. have a friend who's really good at chess. Yeah, is she fit? She's married. Okay. Uh, but she's married make, for a reason. Makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> he snapped that up. As soon yeah, as he saw yeah. her play chess, oh my day. It's because yeah. they're mentally, they're two steps ahead. Exactly. In right. life. In life. Straight up she is. Like she's is like the, one of the smartest people I know. So it's it's right. no surprise that she's good at chess. Right. Anyway. I we, will continue to play checkers. Yeah, checkers are nice and simple. Just forward, fun. back, black, red, easy. Um, fantastic. What's red? Isn't it black versus red checkers? It it's is black red versus white. Yeah, it is. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Never, you don't even fucking know what you're oh, talking about. Good, yeah. <laughs> anyway, how about Bayern Munich, huh? Jeez. Yeah. They are bottling it before our eyes. They lost at home to RB Leipzig. This is finally, they've won 10 titles in a row. This is Dortmund's chance to win the league. Dortmund have to win on the last day at home mm. against Mainz, who are mid-table and playing for mm. absolutely nothing. This is great for the Farmers League arguments. Well, there you go. Does this put Bundesliga back up in the mix if Dortmund win this title? It's We love a bit of competitiveness. Yeah. And I think it's great for Dortmund because they're always so close but never yeah. quite the get Bridesmaids. There. They're proper bridesmaids, yeah. yeah. Very close to climax, <laughs> nothing. Uh, do you always think... There. Do you know what I mean? Do, 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 do you think... 
that if by if, if Dortmund don't win this game, is it time to pack up that club and just go home? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> because honestly, like it shits me how close they, they've when been. Was the, when was the last time they won? The, was it like Klopp's era? Is that last time they won? Klopp, 11 Jeez. years ago. Yeah, they won two in a row. Great club, don't get me wrong. But they've been thrown so many bones this season mm. and they continue to fumble it, fumble it, fumble mm. it. And then now finally on the last day of the season, they're just going to win at home. You cannot fuck that up. No, nah, they won't fuck it up. They'll and do es- it. And especially the, the rumour is that Bellingham will be leaving. Mm-hmm. Karim Adeyemi should be leaving. Potentially Yusuf and Makoko. Lots of their young talents moving mm-hmm. out. Marco Royce, don't know how he's still playing. Hey, how old is he? I don't know. But he's got a thousand short. injuries. Yeah. So this is their time to win. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I'm really rooting for, for Borussia Dortmund. Watch this space. It's going to go down to the Y. The relegation fight is awesome as well. One point separating three teams. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Bundesliga, big up the Bundesliga. We've been plugging them lately, man. So yeah. They, I'm a big fan of German football. Yeah. I am a big fan of German football and their fans are sick yeah. as well. Now, yeah, that's is good. We're gonna go <laughs> now. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> We're gonna go now to the new World Cup logo for 2026. Can you did show you, me this again? Did you see it? Yeah, uh, I I can't believe people sat in a room, <laughs> like, and the board came together, and they were like, "This is the one we're gonna go with, guys." This is the one that's going to change it's not like the super, dynamic of everyone. You, you don't see it as like super modern. You no, know, and, no, no. Like, is, is that two six in the back? I don't understand. What do you mm-hmm. think, Kurt? I struggle a little with this you in the like sense it? that I feel like I understand where they were trying to go with it. Why is right. it just black? Because or white? it's giving like it's giving retro and modern contrast. Right. There's something about it, but I think it looks cheap. Okay. Yeah, there's no there's no color involved. It's just black and white. Like, I also think added. like this is a USA, Canada, and Mexico. Like when you think of the cultures, yeah. I mean Mexican <laughs> culture and everything. Like what they could have done with it could have been put amazing. Could just gun in the background. It would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> would have been amazing cut up our <coughs> we wouldn't be all born offside if we didn't go a bit offside. no it's true I, I i agree i agree but see that's the thing right it's like how do you maybe it's because it's in three countries you can't get it right if you put a gun in there you wouldn't be talking about well, canada would you no absolutely if you put not. you know you can't you just you just can't get it right but the thing is that i wasn't that angry about it like i saw it and i was like okay yeah it's kind of like postmodern world cup mm. i see where you're going yeah when i got really angry about it is when I saw the designs that got turned down. Oh. Have you seen the designs no, no, that got no, rejected? No, I haven't. Look at how beautiful these things are. Oh, see? Particularly this wow, one. Wow, that's a vibe. That that one on the left is a vibe. Look okay. at that one I on the left. I would have been so happy that, with This that. is what I mean. Like, you've got Mexico. You've got all of this amazing culture. That Do you think the Americans are just like, fuck no, we're not in the middle? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you think that's what it was? It doesn't revolve around us, man. You know? <laughs> God damn it, we can't have that logo no more, man. No, I ain't going to put no fucking Mexicans on top of me. Huh? <laughs> so, Do you reckon that's what it was? Build that wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think that might, I, I think that's what it is. It, it didn't, I think so. The, the America wasn't in the center of it, so they were like, nah, we yeah. can't go with that one. Because that one on the far left cat is so It's beautiful. beautiful. It, it is really pretty. I it love is that really one. pretty. The colors, you, see, you clearly see the American flag, you see Canada, and then the awesome like Azteca style yeah. thing on the top. It's beautiful. That's it's what really I think nice. when I think of World Cup. It is really nice. And you could see how they could like brand the whole World Cup after that as well. Yeah. How good it could look. Yeah. I mean, I think FIFA really dropped the ball on that one. Mm. Yeah. No pun intended. Hey. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let, let, let's move on with some, some shoot news. But um, unfortunately, it's all too common. Let's go to Vinicius Jr. Yep. Uh, in La Liga. Mm-hmm. Real Madrid lost. Big win for Valencia. On the field... Far out, Valencia. The, yeah, I mean, they were so close to the relegation. They, they still technically can get relegated, but yeah. I think that pretty much saves them. 40 points, they should be safe. Uh, they beat Real Madrid 1-0. Real Madrid aren't playing for much. But there was a moment, uh, Vinicius Jr. apparently it's come out, he tried to walk off the pitch because he was receiving racist abuse. Mm. Carlo Ancelotti spoke to him, convinced him to play out the remainder of the game. Then a fight breaks out mm. and he gets kind of put in a headlock. Yeah, I saw that. He got put in a headlock. But the opposition player only got a yellow. For putting someone in a headlock. Right, but for his, UFC. for his slap, VAR had a look at it and he got sent. I don't like, look, probably could have sent off both players. Regardless of that, it comes back to the whole racist remarks. He's he's taken to Twitter and said it wasn't the first time, nor the second, nor the third. Racism is normal in La Liga. He said, this isn't football, it's La Liga. What's crazy about that is wow. very clever from Vinicius Jr. That was La Liga's tagline for the season. It's not football, it's La Liga. That was their like global oh, campaign. Wow. And he's, he's taken turned it that on them. and turned it on them. Look, I, I've i said this to you before, yeah. having lived in Spain, you see it, yeah. I did come to the 
I guess I recognized how inherently racist they can be. Mm. And it's not that people are coming from a bad place. It's a lack of education. It's a lack of exposure to different cultures. You don't have the same element of multiculturalism that we do here. Like even Mm. in schools, you're used to having friends from all different parts of the world and you grow Mm. up like that and you Mm. see everyone as equals. And not everyone does, even Mm. though they grow up around that. But in Spain in particular... I always noticed that Mm. and that it was inherent, but it doesn't make it okay. I think Mm. it's just, it's probably a sign of the times in terms of Spain and, and, and where they're at. But you see it all around Europe, not to you mention do. like in the European qualifiers when England go play in like Eastern Europe. I don't want to, I don't yeah, want to single no, out anyone, but you there's see stories you see everywhere. Like, there's so in many Europe, stories from the particular. English national team. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is the best way to get through to these fans by penalizing the football team? Cause then do you feel bad for the players at all? Or is that the only way to get through to them? Is like, for example, if you penalize Valencia, if Valencia lost that game three yeah. nil, and we're now yeah. facing relegation, yeah, I think I think um, that would be a good way to to kind of you know stamp it out or have people look at it as as much as it affects people because I feel like it's almost like it, it feels like in La Liga or in racism and football in general it's just like oh it's like oh it's just that it's just like the football that mm. that's it do you know what I mean it's mm. that kind of yeah. like mindset of it's just racism at the games and it doesn't really matter because we're not racist outside the games mm. but it's just like everyone's you know we're shouting we're screaming do you know what I mean <laughs> so yeah. I think. Even when you're in that group setting in a game, it feels like even you might not go up to a black guy and say, hey, you blah, 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 blah. But, but if you're with a group of people in a, in a yeah. stadium and they're all chanting, yeah. you're going to get that syndrome, that that thing of like, I'm with the group, I'm just going to do what they're doing. Right. So I, I do think um, it does need to be like singled out a little bit You're saying bit it's more. like a cultural thing. It's almost like a cultural yeah. thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So You know what's great? Like, I, I agree with you 100%. I agree with you. And, and always the, in, in numbers and people think they can't be seen because yeah. they're, they're in thousands of people, right? And that's their safe haven. Um, you, you're right. They'd never say it to your face. Like all the people that message Saka. If yeah. you met Saka, you would never say you that. Never but it's easy that. on Instagram from a fake account. Here's the thing though. <sighs> Is it okay to hurl any sort of abuse at a football match? I think so. Like, so is there abuse that's okay and abuse that's not okay? Uh, it depends how, what you what you're doing in terms of abuse. Like abuse saying like your shit that's abuse, no? Okay. So but, if if you abuse someone's sporting because they're there to play sport, uh, right? If you abuse their sporting ability, is that okay? If I sat on the sideline and abused Vinicius Junior for ninety minutes, saying you're a shit football, clearly he's a fantastic footballer. Mm, yeah. But if I was a Valencia fan and I yeah. sat there and said you're shit, look at you can't dribble for shit, you're fucking mm. terrible. Is that okay? I think that's fine. I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, because the comments apply to anyone on the pitch. Okay. It's as soon as you, it, this is this is what discrimination is. It's when right. you emphasize something that sets someone sets apart from apart. others. Okay. Whether it's skin color, right. it's their race, so, so it's their religion, things like that. If, if Hazard got subbed on, mm. right, and I called him fat, and I was a Valencia fan, let's say, and I called Hazard fat for 90 minutes. He mm. probably would only be 20 minutes because he wouldn't last 90 the way he is. <laughs> but if I, if I called him fat, what I, is that okay? What I'll say about that mm. is it is not the same as discriminating someone for Color. race, gender, okay. religion, because he cannot change. Like, he can lose weight. He can mm. gain weight. Uh-huh. Those things can fluctuate. And they can change. And also your perception of Well, the plus fat. size people aren't going to yeah, be happy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah, but your perception of fat might be actually, it's dependent on you. Do you yeah, know what I mean? it's true. It's true. Yeah. You might think someone's fat, but they, but someone else might say that, that person's I, not fat. I just think it's important for like, I know there'll never be an international code of conduct, but yeah. because it's weird because it's like, there's elements in football that I like when I see a hostile atmosphere. Mm. But I don't want that to be racial, as you said, race, gender, race, race, <laughs> gender. Mm. What else did you say? You said another good one. Religion. Religion, Religion right. Yeah. I don't want it to be that. It's- but I do like when I see those little like five-year-old kids on the shoulders going, you wanker! Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. So is there a way football could exist in a happy medium where fans are still hostile but without crossing the line? Is that even possible? Or do you have to... Do you have it's to make so, it? It's so hard. I think it's you so can't hard. yell anything. It's, yeah. It becomes like tennis. That's what I'm saying. I think it's so hard to create that environment because there's always going to be, like I said, you're in a group. Everyone's saying, "Oh, you're shit, you're shit," and then someone goes, "Fuck off, you!" Bl-. Do you know what yes. I mean? Well, yeah, there's, yeah, always, yeah. there's always one person, and yeah. everyone else just there's always that mm-hmm. person. So it's so hard to eradicate it. I do think it's it's just gone on for so long. I don't know what football can do as a whole to prevent it or mm. to. To uh, apart from punishing the actual team, mm, mm. That, and that even seems <coughs> wrong because you know those players aren't mm. inherently racist. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 tough. It's kind of like a lose lose, really. I think the the like what I think is um you know I just saw a video. I'm gonna take a detour for a second. Mm. I just saw a video during the week of fucking Google Assistant. 
right? Google Assistant. Google Assistant. You'll see where I'm going with this. Okay. <laughs> Google Assistant, right, on your phone mm. can now, it can AI call whoever you want. So if you say, Google, can you book me a haircut for 5 p.m.? While you go on with your day, Google will make a phone call, speak to them, no. right? Say, I need to make a haircut for my client, Cat Haddad. Mm. book in a haircut and then give you back the details and put it in your calendar. Jesus right? Christ. Yeah. It's pretty scary. Yeah. What I'm going with that is that technology in 2023 is so fucking good, right? Mm. You, can, you can do all these incredible things mm. that maybe the happy medium is we need technology in stadiums which allow you to identify a person that's yelling from the crowd. You know, whether that's microphones, whether that's cameras, facial detection, maybe that is the way so that if you find the person that said anything to Vinicius Jr., life ban. Mm. but you're not penalizing the Valencia players, but you're life banning I, I feel like that could be done. To I be think honest. Yeah. I agree. I think the problem with that is like, we're not fighting racism. We're not fighting people thinking those things by kicking one guy out of the stadium. Right. I think this stuff is like far deeper rooted than just a guy in a stadium saying things. It's the fact that he thinks them in the first place. And like racism yeah, is yeah, always, but we're, but we're discrimination is always yeah, going to exist. To eradicate it. That's what I mean. It, I, I think the accountability is with, the majority to do the right thing and to call out people for poor behavior. But like, I don't think we're ever going to be in, a, in an environment where it's not happening. Right. And I don't know what you're going to achieve by kicking that one guy out of the stadium. Like, I no, think there's just I, I as think... much responsibility for good people like us to call out those guys and make them feel extremely uncool for what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. But like, what's going to hurt that person more? Never being able to go watch Valencia again. I think that'll hurt them more. Yeah. Mm. Don't you reckon? Yeah, I agree. I, I think True. It's, you know someone developed the technology, and I'll promote it for free. <laughs> and there you go. That is a hard we thing. Let me tell you, someone that works on alongside you. all our techers, that is a difficult <laughs> thing to get this man to promote for free. Okay, so if you go make the technology, you get the eyeballs. Um, let's hope they do sort it out anyway. Because yeah. let me just say, Vinicius Junior, for me, best winger in the world. Yeah, for I me. Agree, Although I agree. Kyle Walker put him in his back pocket. Put him in his back pocket. He made me second guess that, <laughs> mm -hmm. but he's superior to uh, to Saka. Yeah. Anyway, I also There's, think like on the racism stuff though, mm -hmm. like. Vinny is a player who has copped it left, mm. right, and center for the he majority has. of his career. Even and just for him to be able to well. you know what? bounce now, back now from now that. He's copped it, now he's copped it for his skin color. Before he copped it for being Brazilian and dancing. Do you remember everyone yeah. got the shits at him because he used to dance off the score? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's copped a lot of he's stuff. He's copped a lot, man, yeah. So. But yeah. He's, he's gone from level to level. Uh, a couple of questions I want to check in before we say uh, goodbye. George96. Can Leicester stay up with two games left? Uh, by the time this pod goes live, Leicester will be playing Newcastle because uh, that's a Tuesday morning 5 a.m. game. Less than Newcastle. No one, no one spoke about Harry Suter enough, to be honest. Well, Suter hasn't everyone's seen just the... got, Everyone just kind of like forgot about him, but he's been in the heart of that. I mean, he got benched, I think. He got benched like... by Dean Smith. Yeah. Like, Rogers liked him, but mm. Dean Smith's come in and not played him, and he's conceded eight goals in the last two games, so, you know. It just, it just looks like a sinking yeah. ship anyway, to be here. You don't want to be yeah, there, do you? Newcastle, Newcastle are playing very well. Yeah. I would be quite worried if I, I was them. I want to get your word on it. Leicester finish with Newcastle away. They also finish with West Ham at home. Mm -hmm. Um... Two teams are going down, one staying up. I think Leeds are gone. I think after Leeds is showing this weekend, they finish with Tottenham at home. I don't think there's any coming back for Leeds. Well, you don't know. The Spurs are just flaky at the moment but anyway. You lost to Brentford Everton, this weekend. Everton are the team that's sitting in safety and they yeah. finish with Bournemouth at home. They've got to win. At Goodison uh, Park, they've got to win. At Goodison Park they too? I, I, I do back them to win. There's mm. no excuse. There's no excuse. It's incredible. It's, 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 a, it's a really exciting final day because all three teams fighting for relegation have will no. finish at home. Wow. Right, on the final day. So you're going to have That's a home mad. crowd. So there's going to be a lot of tears mm. and maybe some happy people as well, but probably a lot of tears. So tune into that Premier League final day. It's going to be absolutely epic. Uh, War Dog FC. Jeez, it's intense. Is Serie A back? Is it top two in the world? I hate comparing leagues. We do that too much on, yeah, this, we do yeah, do that too much. Much. on this show. Uh, but I will say Serie A is definitely back. You just got to look at the three European finals. Yeah. There's an Italian team in each of them. How good if they it's win unreal. all three? Belal Bola. How was it playing in the African Cup? That's a question specifically for you because I haven't played in the African Cup. <laughs> the one that um, yet to play. Last, uh, last match I played, I took my Achilles. So yeah, so not very good. Not very good. Not that very was the good. last game I played. So, I mean, it was it's good. I, I enjoy it. Um, I'm, I think I'll be back next year. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I heard a rumor. Well, you can have a couple non-African players. You can have as many as you want, but it's just frowned upon. Oh, is it? <laughs> I was going to ask the play. I mean, you, 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 you can't really. No. Like, it's more like 
because of the heritage of the teams and yeah, stuff, it's yeah. like you should have at least like you know when the Premier League. So hold on, because to be a, fair, oh, to no, be no, fair, no, you're Nigerian it. and you play exactly. for Zimbabwe. No, 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 no listen, play. I'm, I'm Af- just as Zimbabwean I'm, as you. Are. I'm African. We are just as That's Zimbabwean different. as each other. I'm African. I'm Egyptian. You're not African. I'm Egyptian. Yeah, exactly. So, so but I it's like, but okay, it's like okay. There's a lot of Fabianos in Tanzania. It's like so. There are. So say we check that. Say for Zim, right? Zim would be run by. As, uh, Zim guys, Zim all people, and they can pick like there'll be like seven or six starting Zim players, okay, and then everyone else can kind of be from different ethnicities, kind of thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Same with South Sudan. But was there a Nigerian was... team? Yeah, there was. But you didn't play for them. No, because my best mate plays for Zim, man. I want to play with my. This is ridiculous. I want to play with my boys. <laughs> Ma- maybe not. I might go Nigeria next year. We'll see. Nigeria, <laughs> shout me. Brilliant. Sure. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, apparently, the African Cup wasn't very good because he hurt himself. But besides that, it is an awesome spectacle. And uh, I don't know. Listen, they clearly don't want me at Zimbabwe. But if any African sides are looking for a non-African player that fits in the quota, I'll come and play. That looks like an absolute <laughs> vibe. I love the atmosphere. Yeah. And that's it for the show this week. Plenty of football coming up, though. You got all the EFL playoffs, which I'm especially excited for. Mm. The richest game in football is the Championship playoff. Who do you want to see up in the Prem? Coventry or Luton? <laughs> Luton, no brainer, because then I can make. <laughs> got a post saved so when Luton make it so. have you got a photo of you in the Luton kit yeah I have oh, yeah. what age did you it? leave Luton 17 okay so I can say I would have been in the Premier League if I never had the injury so that's fair enough for. that's your official <laughs> that's my official your post. official claim to fame and uh, we'd love to see Luton because of their tiny stadium Coventry though back up mm. in the Premier League would be big and of course John Aloisi was the only Australian yes, to play connection. for Coventry mm. as well fun wasn't fact wasn't there an Australian player who just made his debut in the Premier League Camp Not Pion. Longer. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. 55th Australian player, I believe. Massive. To, to Look play at you. In the Premier okay. League. Look at you. Twitter. He's a manly boy. Uh, yeah. yeah he's, he's from manly. It's crazy. Yeah. North Sydney. A League trying to claim him, but he never played in the A League. So no, technically, he's an NPL one product. Exactly. <laughs> he, he is an NPL product. <laughs> NPL straight to Prem. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Actually, just on that, I know producer Shab's going to stab me. I know we're probably going over time. But just on that, uh, you mentioned NPL product. Second division, right? We're going to pick some teams. Now, mm. this got brought to my attention during the week. At the moment, if there's one team that sings out to Ola Tech, you, you can't say yours. I've already said mine. You, you, I'm Preston Lions. You're Preston Lions. I'm Preston Lions through and through. I'll be at the games. I'll fly over to Melbourne for the games, for sure. Wow. That's they just huge. give me... They, for me, I look at them and I go, that is a that is a non-league team to the, like what my perception of a non-league team is. Right. So you're loving the culture down at Preston. You're not allowed to steal that one. I don't want to answer this yet. Okay. Are, are there any like, are, are they pulling you in different directions? Are you, do you like the Sydney clubs? Do you well, like a bit of Queensland, this is the a bit of Victoria? problem is like, I was developing a bit of a relationship with Preston as well. Oh, just copying me. No, Why I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't copying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make me sound like such a child. You're a copycat. I'm not a copycat. <laughs> um, but it look, New South Wales. It'll be a New South Wales team, 100%. Right. And it'll probably be influenced by friends that I have that play for certain clubs. Right. I'll tell you what, a few of the clubs that have impressed me, um, mm-hmm. hitting up the pod and sending us some stuff and also just chatting to us about their vision. Hume City, I want to shout them out. Oh, Hume, really? Hume, have, were, I don't know if they're in the final they're, list. They're in Melbourne, right? They're, I don't know if they made the list or whatever, but they, they were doing a big push and they were messaging us and showing us. It's awesome. They're putting a lot of effort into their media and everything. Uh, Wollongong as well. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Wollongong doing a lot of work. A very nice stadium. Yes. I like the Wollongong Wolf yeah. Stadium. See, I don't think we should pick sides. I think we should go in and visit some of these. Go and visit some? I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm down. And tell yeah. their story. Listen, yeah. when that, when the, I will say this, when we, the second league kicks off, I know we're going over time. When the second league <laughs> kicks off, I'm so down to like go down and just do some interviews down there. And yeah. And just do content for them. Yeah. Because yeah. sure. it's going to need it. And I think it could be really, really good for this game in this country. I don't want to say yeah. it could be bigger than the A-League because I don't no. want to compare them. I don't want to make you fight. I love you both equally. You know, <laughs> <laughs> two kids. Yeah. But let's be real, it could. Mm-hmm. Right, it could. So I can't yeah. wait for that. Um, and if we learn anything from the Australia Cup and the series that you guys produced is that there's such cool stories that come out of the NPL. Yes. And so many stories we don't yet know. And I would love for us to be able to share those. Yeah, just don't film the fans behind the goal. Yeah. Oof. Anyway. <laughs> Don't comment. On that note, no comment. On that note, uh, we're going to sign off for another week of Born Offside. We've got some exciting guests coming in. Uh, we've got some a few pretty big former footballers. Uh, there's one, I don't know if it's been announced, but there's a former Premier League man that's, that's jumping on the pod. It is, yeah. Robson Carney wants to tune in. Can you believe it? The man that scored that turn in Euro 2016. <laughs> I think everyone knows him for that goal. Um, another big favourite of ours here from Sydney, Australia, is going to jump on the pod next week as well. Uh, he's a Hall of Famer for a Premier League club. That's all I'm going to say. You'll see him next week. But we can't wait. We've got so much in store for you guys. Have a good week. We'll see you next week. Bye, see guys. You know.